Is the oil age finally on the verge of ending? Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. You're watching The Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Really fantastic to see so many new subscribers come on board over the last month. Welcome if you're new and welcome back to everyone else. Thank you. Big shout out to Patreon supporters of the channel. I'll put a link in the description below. If you'd like to support the channel, you can jump on, click that link and it's pretty easy to support the electric revolution. So is the oil age finally on the verge of ending? Well, a recent Clean Technica article written by Charles Morris from Evanex has an interesting viewpoint on this question. And I'm gonna share with you my thoughts based on the 12 months of pretty intensive research that I've done on this issue. And I mean, not just in America or just in Europe, or just in China, but I mean researching this issue very heavily over the last 12 months all over the world from a variety of different angles. Just four years ago, the end of the oil age was considered a crazy dream. Today, it is official policy in a growing number of countries, states, cities, and corporate boardrooms all around the world. Now, Clean Technica reports that certainly there are good reasons to be skeptical that proposed phase outs and bans will actually take place as scheduled. However, a major conceptual barrier has been crossed. The idea can no longer be dismissed as the ravings of green-eyed lunatics. In 2017, a bill that would phase out the sale of gas burners starting in 2040 was introduced in the California legislature. Matthew Metz, co-executive director of the advocacy group called Tura, published an op-ed calling for Washington state to follow suit. Crazy was one of the kind of words used in the media reaction or the media storm that followed. Mr. Metz was called a loony, a moon baddie, and of course, a commie. I'd say the reaction is about 99% negative, he told the Seattle Times, but people will get over it. And he was right. How crazy was the idea? In 2020, California Governor Gavin Newsom issued an executive order requiring all new passenger vehicles sold in the state to be zero emission by 2035. In my view, this will happen well before 2035. In March 2021, Washington State raised the stakes, proposing to phase out the stinkers by 2030. Massachusetts and New York have also joined the movement away from oil. Now, as NPR reports, a lot has changed in only four short years. And what was once a fringe idea is now part of a global trend. Tesla has become the world's most valuable automaker and its success has caused a mad scramble by the legacy brands to accelerate their own electrification programs, or at least try to convince Wall Street that they're doing so. Share shareholders obviously don't wanna see car companies say that they're gonna keep making the technology of the past. They wanna see them make strong efforts towards making the technology of the future. Some of those have announced their own self-imposed deadlines to end production of fossil powered cars. More and more countries are announcing targets to phase out internal combustion engine vehicles at the national level. Sandra Wappelhorst of the International Council on Clean Transportation told NPR. Now I just wanna tell you what I think on this. These efforts are fantastic, they're great. What I'm gonna say, Europe and China represent a massive percentage of the world market, of the world car market. If you put Europe and China together, that's more than, that's around about 50% of global car sales every year. What has happened in Europe and China this year? Well, 20% of all cars sold in China in the months of October and November were fully electric, right? Similar numbers in Europe, but in many countries in Europe, that number has gone well above that. I'd say by 2025, at least 50% of all cars sold in China and Europe will be electric. By 2030, about 95%. This in and of itself, without any government intervention whatsoever, will drive adoption of electric cars in all the other countries who have no say, such as Australia, New Zealand, many small Southeast Asian countries, Indonesia, these countries all over the world where they don't have a car market and they simply buy vehicles from countries with large populations, large sales, large numbers of sales, where they will buy what is available. 
This in and of itself has already meant that we are irreversibly on course for at least 90% adoption globally of electric cars. Now, at last count, some 25 countries and several US states have announced plans to end the sale of petroleum burners. The European Union is considering a zero emission mandate that could start to bite around 2035. But current emissions rules, which will come into place in 2030 in Europe, will mean that even after 2030, it will be extremely difficult for car brands to sell vehicles with a petrol or diesel engine in them. Global capitals, including Amsterdam, London, and Oslo have proposed bans on gas guzzlers in city centers. Even the UK has banned fossil fuel sales from 2030 onwards. So has Canada. Many, many urban transit agencies have set dates to convert their public transit fleets to all electric. Have a look at what buses are now. The majority of buses being built now, what are they? Electric. Many, many urban transit automakers that have announced plans to wind down production of ICE vehicles include General Motors, Honda, Mercedes, Volkswagen, Volvo, Jaguar, BYD, and Volkswagen. Readers, we are skeptical. As far as we are aware, not a single one of the bans that have been announced are actually settled law. Most are proposals and some are executive orders that could easily be reversed by a future administration. Some headline grabbing announcements such as COP26's non-binding suggestion that all vehicles be zero emission by 2040 or President Joe Biden's call for 50% of US sales to be EVs by 2030 amount to little more than statements it would be nice if. The proposals from automakers invariably include Weasley phrases like, if market conditions allow. In fact, those are the exact words that Mercedes has on their website right now. Furthermore, the timelines attached to most of these proposals are so far in the future that no action will be required in the next few years, except for commissioning consultants to prepare lengthy studies and market assessments at taxpayer expense. The policymakers who crafted all these vague proposals will be out of office and on the golf course long before the successors have to figure out how to implement them. However, that does not mean that these proposals are meaningless. Far from it. Some automakers seem to be taking them seriously. And so is the oil industry. Judging by the ever-growing flood of anti-EV disinformation that's been taking over our inboxes lately. A few years from now, we might be surprised to find that some of these jurisdictions, California and Amsterdam are likely candidates, remain deadly serious about ending fossil fuel vehicle sales on schedule. Perceptions do matter. And right now, public perception is coming around to the idea that the oil age is drawing to a close. The demise of gas cars may be pretty far in the future, and it may turn out to be a messy affair, but it's no longer a crazy idea. Now, you must consider the Osborne effect, right? What is that? The Osborne effect is a societal phenomenon of customers cancelling or deferring orders for the current, soon-to-be-obsolete product as an unexpected drawback of a company announcing a future product prematurely. Now, the term was coined in reference to the Osborne Computer Corporation, a company that took more than a year to make its next product available and eventually went bankrupt in 1983. So the question I have for you, what consumer would want to buy a car or a truck or a bus or any type of vehicle that's not fully electric in five years time, even in two years time? Think about this logically, right? Right now, you can buy a BYD, you can buy many different vehicles in China for the exact same price, which are electric versus their gas counterparts. However, we all know those gas vehicles will last nowhere near as long as that battery powered vehicle. The technology is inferior. The cost of ownership is far greater and people don't want to look like an idiot. Now, if we have a look at the current trends in global sales of electric cars, we can see that electric cars have more than doubled in sales in Europe and China this year. And the reason why? Well, in places where, such as China, consumers can buy an electric car for the same price as a gas car, they almost invariably choose to do so. EVs are supreme, and the demise of ICE is inevitable. 
Today, electric vehicle sales are still only a minority of new vehicle sales in most countries around the world, but we have reached a tipping point. Now, as Malcolm Gladwell says, a tipping point is that magic moment when an idea, trend, or social behavior crosses a threshold, tips, and spreads like wildfire. Thanks for watching the channel. Look forward to seeing you again on the next one. Bye-bye.